Minnow, baby. Happy birthday, Shark and or Minnow. Shark and Minnow. Really? Mm. Mm. Mazel mm. tov. He's coming down here tomorrow. No, is he? Mm. How's the weather? Bright. Mm. Like your mother's ass. <laughs> got him. Got him, Bobby. <laughs> it didn't you. matter what you were going to say. That was a lead in. Yeah, that's that's where <laughs> it was going to go. <laughs> yeah. uh, speaking of bright and shining like your mother's ass, go to W Energy Drink. That's uh, W.GG to spark up your day uh, like Irene does every Tuesday morning and get ready for that train that comes through. Uh, you can get the gummy, you can get the, you can get the protein, you can get the shakes. Uh, they got, uh, what else they got over there, Raymond? Uh, did you say shakers? They have yeah. shakers? Yeah. Yep, there's there's the motion, uh, and obviously your classic like energy drink style, uh, whatever fits your fancy. Go to w.gg. Type in Simple Minds for fifteen percent off all your orders. Uh, it's do. W Energy. It's like the shake weight. Yeah. Oh my tits balance when I do that. I bet they did. The shake weight. I bet they did. They did. Nice Get shirt, that there, man Raymond. Master. Thanks. Representing the uh, the spoked bee, the black and yellow, uh, greatest season ever. The uh, the Boston Bruins, 133 points, could be 135 by the end of tonight as they play the Montreal Canadiens to end their regular season. Um, through 81 games, the Bruins uh, at a 64, 12, and 5 record. It's fucking insane. Obviously, the most wins as well uh, as most points, both NHL records. Uh, just the fourth team ever to win 60 games. They broke the record uh, previously held by the 1976-1977 Montreal Canadiens, 132 points. They were in the middle of a uh, consecutive run with four straight Stanley Cup titles from 76 to 79, which is why I say it, this is not the greatest hockey team ever assembled, um, Patrice Bergeron's 2023 Bruins. It's just it's the greatest season, though. You can't take that away. Yeah. Um, a lot of people are trying to. The Canadians did it in less games and less opportunities for points. They also did it when there were like 12 teams in the league. So keep that in mind. The the salary cap era. uh, A lot of people are calling the best team of the salary cap era. You might want to argue that Tampa Bay Lightning roster um, Mm -hmm. that won three straight. Those guys probably put them up, but I don't know. How good is the team, Raymond? How many Hall of Famers do you think they end up with uh, when it's all said and done? See now, Billy Hockey fucking ruined this because you're I so did... weak. You're so weak. Don't I said? I up. said six. Yeah. I'll say five. I'll go five. They got five with Bergeron, Marshan, uh, Krejci. I think if he wins one, McAvoy's one in the making in Aust- Pasternak. That's five. You're saying Bruins Hall of Famers or Hall NHL Hall of Famers? Bruins Hall of Fa- Well, no, gotcha. Bruins <laughs> players that are, will be NHL Hall of Famers. Okay. Bergeron's a lock. He's your only lock. Krejci, mm-hmm. I thought, would be pretty close. He just notched his 1,000th game in the league. He only has like 750 points, something, as opposed to Bergeron has over 1,000, 1,040. Um, Krejci does have the title, 2011, but I don't know. I don't even know if a second title is good enough to get him over the over the schneid there. Um, well, that's beyond... why I asked, how do you determine it? Is it an MLB, like where the writers are old and French and don't want all these new up and coming stars that are ruining the game to get in? Or is it like the NBA where everyone and their mother gets in? Somewhere in the middle. Okay. It's somewhere in the middle. Like the NFL is pretty generous with it, too. Yeah. The NFL has gotten real soft with it. Yeah. Well, because all of them are dead. That should like be Ray in the eighth there. grade trying to get that Hummer. You know what I'm saying? Real soft with it. Real soft. Real soft cock. Uh, Pasternak is certainly projecting there. He's got a long way to go. He keeps notching sixty goal seasons in uh, <laughs> sixty goal seasons in Stanley Cups. He doesn't have the cup yet. He's got to go get the cup. Uh, cup it, <laughs> cup it. Um, McAvoy is yeah, a, help a, a top tier defenseman. It's going to take a lot for defenseman to get in. He's got to start racking up some points. His points are low too. You have one. I think you might have one. Taylor Hall's another run? guy. He's got an MVP. If he gets a cup, he's got to get his points rolling up there. That I mean, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. Marshand, I guess. Marshand's in the Krejci camp. Um, with you know, the points are a little bit better there. But no, you have, I mean, compared to the Canadians team or even that Red Wings team from the from the 90s, where they're really like six or seven like sure fire Hall of Famers that walked out on the ice every night. This team's not that. I actually don't know how the fuck they're winning. I don't know how they won 64, <laughs> probably 65 games by the end of it. I really don't. Uh, when you, when the, you ask the, you, dr- the drunk. 
the drunk on the bench. You want to take old drunk Monty? I think so. He's your number one? Look how much they all feared the coach last year. Obviously, it's coming out that they were just scared of the younger guys. I mean, DeBrusque wanted to be traded. Uh, So, yeah, I think it's just a whole coaching system and how he's letting them play a little free. Not the whole. I mean, if it's the same team and there's a new coach, he must be setting them up in a way that's significantly more successful. The style of play changed a little bit. They're a little bit more free in um, in their in their shot selection change, and they've been able, able to open things up a little bit. But the younger guy thing is bullshit. What fucking what younger guy outside of DeBrusque who is already starting to perform on the top line with Cassidy has really come on? Frederick mm-hmm. and Frederick is it even that young anymore? It's his fourth year in the league. Mm-hmm. Charlie Coyle is another guy who was bitching that Cassidy was too hard. So in hockey, this happens that you you, you run stale and, and the uh, the room starts listening to you and you lose kind of the spark. And generally, a new coach comes in in that first month of the season, you you see an impact. And then they're going, you don't see it for six months. <laughs> that co- it, you yeah. don't see that type of impact just for the, for the new coach hire for six months. Now, obviously, from a um, strategic standpoint, maybe he's adding a little bit more, something different that they've been able to tap into, but... Sounds like your point. If they're playing freer than what you thought last year, if you think this team has five Hall of Famers and they were being strapped last year, if they just let the guys play, that could be part of it. Who was the top goal scorers when Cassidy and Claude Julian were the coaches? Pasternak like, well, and Marchand. But how much? It wasn't like this, what Pasternak's doing right now. No, but Marchand was... It was more argu- team-driven, right? It was never was anyone had it like, going away. It was always the top three line. The no, look, pa- line. I mean, Pasternak broke out, but he's been considered... He's had the most goals in the NHL as a winger the past five years. He's He's been a top five scorer for the past five years. He's got 60 goals. It's, never, it's, it's the second guy in Bruins history to do it. It's a pretty big accomplishment. So, yeah, he broke out, and they certainly found ways to use him. The guy's fucking ice time has, like... I don't know, not doubled, but pretty close to what he was ever doing with Cassidy. So the, he's out there a lot more, certainly. Um, but in the past, under Cassidy, Brad Marchand was considered the best wing in the game for a couple of years. Yeah. You know, D- uh, Patrice Bergeron, your only surefire Hall of Famer, has been leading that line. So they had talent. Um, I think you got to look at the goaltending, Raymond. No more, t- more no Tuka Rask. But even then, in regular seasons, the guys won Vesna trophies. Like the last season, he played healthy. He was the best goalie in hockey. Him and um, uh, oh shit, who's Hashik? No, who's the guy? Who's the Dominic um, Hashik? No, that was that was way off. Who the fuck? He's in Dallas now. I'll remember it in a second. Um, oh, go on. Yeah. Um, obviously, uh, Olmark's been unbelievable, and um, uh, Swayman's been almost just as good. Goaltending's on the list. You got to take a look at the additions. Start in the offseason with Pavel Zaka, and that trade was, has been phenomenal. Um, and then the midseason off- acquisitions between Orloff. The fact Hathaway. that you got to dial it all the way back even to Lindholm last year at the deadline. Mm-hmm. You go Lindholm, Pavel Zaka. They didn't really do much in free agency, right? And But then you go and trade for Orloff, Hathaway, and then Bertuzzi as insurance. Those guys have been critical, critical, critical pieces. Mm-hmm. And now your decor went from Charlie McAvoy and Matt Grizzlick and the corpse of Carlo and whoever else was trying to play left and nothing else but Mike Riley to three of the top, I don't know, 20 defensemen in the league, two of the top 10. They're just stacked now. They're stacked. Mm-hmm. Make a break. Give it Maybe. up for fucking Don Sweeney, man. All of us said we wanted to fire Sweeney for so many years, and now it's like, oh, please, sir, may I buy you a beer? Everybody did. Everybody looked at this team going into this year and said, fire Don Sweeney. Not good enough. Marshane was going to be hurt for six months. McAvoy was going to be hurt. We laughed Krejci at the Bergeron signing when he came back, said he was coming. We laughed at the Krejci signing. He came back and said all these fossils are coming back. This is their last run together kind of thing, and fuck it. They're it's what gave Kaim Bloom all his confidence. He's like, if Sweeney can do it, I can too. <laughs> he should have. He should have went and signed fucking Pedro or somebody from the from the yeah. heap. They would have been. They would have been better off. Um, yeah, it's it's a hell of a season. Um, health has been a big one. Nobody was that injured. Um, yeah, they're getting contribution from everybody. So you look ahead. Their first round opponent opponent could be uh, either the Islanders or the Panthers. They should walk through both of those teams. Islanders probably give you a little bit a little bit more of a push, but uh, they they should walk through both of them. 
let's take a look at these first couple games in this in round one. And if they look like Tuka Poopies out there, then start to worry because I still don't have any faith that they're going to go and run rickshaw over the league through the playoffs. I think it's going to be extremely hard, and they're going to put themselves in a position to choke like they always do. It's hockey. I mean, how many upsets? We've seen one eight upsets all the time in hockey. It's not like basketball or you know any of the other sports before major they're sports. They can come if you someone gets hot at the right time. The goalie gets hot. Shooter gets hot, and your tickets up. I guess that's true. But um, did the 1977 uh, Montreal Canadiens lose in the first round because it was just hockey? No, they went on and won the cup. Yeah, I last team to get 132 points in a season. Okay, it's a fucking epic fail if they don't win the cup. Oh epic yeah, fail. now it is. Yeah, epic fail. Here's your biggest threats: the Hurricanes. They suck against the Hurricanes. The Hurricanes have their number. They beat the hell out of them. Um, I'd be scared to death of the Hurricanes uh, in the East. The other team is the Lightning. They just got enough talent that they scare me. Um, if you go up against them, they can turn it on, turn on the Jets. They've won multiple championships. They still get a bunch of talent down there. Uh, the Lightning uh, would be the second best challenge. A lot of people are putting their uh, stock in Toronto again. I don't know why. How many times do the Maple Leafs have to go shit their pants to worse than Tuka Rask in the playoffs every year for the past 50 years to believe that uh, the Maple Leafs well, they're just not a credible, credible threat to anybody. Never mind the Bruins. Mine's the Oilers. Okay, to going to the West. Um, I get the Knights and I got the Avalanche. The Avalanche because they're probably still top to bottom the best team in the league, and the Knights because that old big bad bad guy Bruce Cassidy is out there. And the one time they played him this year, they lost, yeah. um, and they didn't look themselves because Bruce Cassidy might still have a little mental edge on those mental midgets. So you like you got the Oils, Oilers. Yeah, I think they're playing for the one seed right now against Dallas, I believe. I think they could end up with the one seed. But, yeah, the Oilers are on a hot streak like I was talking about earlier. You know, it's anyone's match when you get into the playoffs and you're hot. This team's running, I think, an eight-game winning streak. So watch out for the Oilers in the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to you don't want to run into a motivated, hot Connor McDavid. That's for sure. That's the Stanley Cup Finals. They got to get there first. Um, when do the playoffs start? Monday. Next- Monday. Monday at 7 p.m. against either, like you said, the Islanders or Panthers. God bless hockey. The The season ends today, four days later, the playoffs start. The NBA, the Celtics week. haven't played in a we fucking a week. playing game. <laughs> Gotta get their rest. Mm, God, they're such pussies. <laughs>